So if you're brand new to type or it's pretty early days for you and you're just sort of trying to figure out what this whole ESFP thing means all by itself, we're going to talk, we're going to be talking about this in two different layers of complexity. But I think if you're new, you're still going to be able to follow along. Uh, and if you are somebody who is a type geek and is super into this, then we'll also address some of these components there too. But if you're new to type, hang with us because I think that this is going to be valuable no matter what level you're at right now. Yeah. So the four different subtypes of ESFPs, and these are actually the same subtypes of all types, are the dominant version, the creative version, the normalizing version, and the harmonizing version. Now, if you're a type geek, what this really means is that your first two cognitive functions, your dominant or what we call driver function in the car model, and your auxiliary or what we call the co-pilot, these cognitive functions are going to have an either uh, what's called analytic or holistic expression. And basically what that means, I'm starting to see it even more simply in like output and input. Yeah. There's two different directions that each of these functions take, which is more like express expression and pushing my energy out to the world. And then there's a uh, there's an expression that is more of a, of an input or receiving information from the world. And each of the functions can do both of these, right? They can both input and output. But we have a tendency to like one of those expressions more. We either like the output version or the input version more. Just quickly, somebody could confuse that with introversion or extroversion. So just make sure you land that point clearly. We're not talking about introvert or extrovert here. No, exactly. Input output's different. Exactly. We're, we're more talking about using the function to assert our will in the world or to be sensitive to other people's assertion, like kind of receiving information. And each of the functions has a slightly different... So way it shows up when it's in output versus input. Yeah, one, one way to think of it is, is like a real intense focus versus more of like a diffused view. Right. Like a lens we see things through. Exactly. And so depending upon whether or not you have a preference for that more assertive energy with those two functions or receptive energy for those two functions and in what order you prefer that in, it's going to change your subtype. Now, we get trained into output or input or maybe more assertive versus receptive energy, I should say. We get trained into this as people. And part of that training is the career choice we have. So some of these, some of these career options are going to be far, far better for some of the subtypes than others. Like take, for example, when I talk about the creative subtype of ESFPs, these positions might not be as attractive to somebody who is a normalizing ESFP and vice versa. If you're a dominant ESFP type, it's not going to be as attractive. You know, the, the career options for dominant ESFPs are not going to be as attractive for harmonizing ESFPs and vice versa. So some of these are going to be probably more attractive to you depending upon your subtype. And others are going to be like, really? ESFPs would want to do that? And yeah, probably the ESFP subtype that's very different than your subtype. And if you listen to the full episode with Dr. Nardi about the subtypes, I believe in that episode, we go into the neurotransmitters and the chemicals in our brain mm -hmm. also have a play in this too. Right. So it's not just nurture, it's also nature, but might be influenced by nurture. Certain chemicals our brain gets used to or likes more than others tends to lean us in one of these four directions. That's right. Exactly. Okay. So let's talk about what those careers are. And, uh, and, and again, actually, interestingly enough, if you're a young ESFP just starting out, you know, like maybe you're in your early 20s, as I mentioned, after 25, your career choice very much influences how your type is going to show up in this way. So you might be at the cusp of making choices that will you know, encourage you to land in one of these four subtypes. So be sensitive to which description fits you now and maybe where you want to end up, right? Like what kinds of, you know, traits or characteristics you would like to show up um, with as an ESFP.